Hello and welcome to the SWS Classroom Chat. We have with us today Ms. Rakhi Mitra, ma'am, Senior Geography Teacher. I know, ma'am, it must be a very uh, difficult time for you, very busy time for you with the exams just round the corner. So thank you very much for sparing the time for this interview. Thank you very much. So uh, let me start by talking about what happened in the semester one examinations. Two papers, physics and geography, were two subjects where students felt they could not do their best in semester one. So in that sense, semester two is a is a, is a uh, time to kind of make up for the lost marks of semester one. Should students go into semester two with a bit of apprehension and anxiety, given the fact that it is the original subjective paper pattern? Hmm. And don't get panic that if the one is bad, so the two will also be bad. Hmm. Better to stick to the point and stick to the reduced syllabus. Hmm. I think everything will be fine for them. So in that sense, you think that the subjective pattern is probably more of safe territory, more familiar territory for the students? Yes, the subjective is always better for the students. Okay, fine. Because uh, objective, they must have a very thorough study. Yes. And each and every uh, sentence can be a question for them. Yes. But for the uh, subjective ones, they can actually understand the concept and write in their own words. So while we are talking about the subjective paper pattern, um, Rakhi ma'am, I want to ask you, what should be the best way to actually write an answer? Obviously, there is an art and science to writing a good answer as far as geography is concerned. What would that art and science be? What, what defines a good answer? To the point answer, the key word must be very clear to them. Right. And what they want to write hmm. by reading the question, they should formulate among, within their mind and then write that one. Okay. That's the first thing they must do. They read the question thoroughly and hmm. frame the answer. Hmm. And that only they should write. And it should be to the point, not a very elaborate one. Okay. And preferably, maybe even underline the keywords so that you make it easy for the exam. Yes, it will be better if they are very, very confident. Okay. Okay. That's an important point. Now, a number of schools I find in their pre-board uh, examination papers, they included questions which students thought was not part of the reduced syllabus. For example, I know of schools which ask questions on acid rain, on uh, ozone layer, on greenhouse effect from the entire waste management chapter. Now, no, it has... It has so it has led to a lot of confusion among students. So what should students do? Should they stick only to the reduced syllabus? They should strictly stick to the reduced syllabus. Okay. Once the council has given us, we should mm. stick to it. Okay. We so cannot go beyond it. So while we're talking about this reduced syllabus, for instance, students want to know whether the names and the kinds of ports, for instance, do they need to know what kind of a port is Vishakapatnam okay, port? Syllabus, the ports are not there. Yep. But for their sake, they must know that the Chennai is in East Coast or it is in Tamil Nadu. So okay. only that much is the knowledge is good enough for them. So they but don't in need, detail. So you're saying that they don't need to know uh, uh, Mangluru um, uh, port does what or um, uh, the Paradi port uh, is involved in the import or export of which mineral. They don't not need much, to know. Not much. They don't need to know all that. Or what kind of a port That's is Vishakapatnam? Syllabus, it's not there. Okay, and uh, Actually, as a tech question, sometimes it may come. Okay, and uh, is it advisable for students to know the national waterways and the routes one, two, three? I mean, do they need to not know all that? Not detail. Okay. Not detail. So when you say not detail, what do they need to know? That yes, like the national highway, national waterways are also there, hmm. and basically the one, two, three that the Ganga and all those. They are a little bit knowledge they must have, but not in a detail that from where to where and how much it will go. Not all those things. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, are they likely to get questions like, you know, which state has the highest sugarcane production? Uh, which yes. state has which, which state has the largest number of wind farms? Which, which is likely to, which is the, the longest highway? Why I'm asking this is because many of these statistics keep changing. For instance, even in sugarcane production or sugar production, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh are so close to each other that last year, 2021-22 statistics, if you see, it is uh, uh, Maharashtra which is number one. But otherwise, UP has generally been number one. Uh, and textbooks are not updated. Similarly, with regard to national highways, because of the renumbering of the national highways, there is a lot of confusion because the textbooks are not updated. So, should students know all these statistics by heart, which is the largest uh, which is a state with the largest production of XYZ mineral and different crops. They must. 
they must okay. because it is geography questions are basically the relation between the up to dating the knowledge of the what is happening in the surrounding okay they must have that generally we say a little bit of gk they must have that's true that's true so you are saying that they should know all these uh, different statistics if the change is there they must know the change is there yeah okay fine that's a fair point uh, as far as the map marking is concerned now should that be done with color pencil or ordinary gray pencil will do not mandatory color is not mandatory pencil or black pen uh, if the student is very very confident they can use the black pen otherwise pencil they can use okay so pencil is good enough the other question which students ask is how accurate should one be one be with map marking in the sense how much of a deviation is accepted as the map is fixed every year the same map is having uh, the council is giving yes. so now they must have the reference points hmm. like we teach them that when we have to mark the mumbai eye just go 4 to 5 mm from mumbai towards the arabian sea and the mumbai eye is there yes. so the map pointing must be exactly what it is okay. you cannot deviate from the point okay. and uh, especially for the uh, standard meridian that the three points we consider Yes. The Allahabad, then the eastern coast, and yeah. the east coast of Sri Lanka. These yes. three points should be aligned. Right. And it should be from boundary to boundary. It cannot be that in between the map only a straight line is there. Right. And uh, uh, if if you look at the proper India map, the standard meridian and the east coast, there is a difference. But ICSC, I believe, it kind of says that it should be kissing the uh, Lanka coast. It should be. Yes. There should According be. According to council, it should touch. It. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yes. Now, uh, what should be really the approach to the reasoning questions in the uh, in the in in the sense? Uh, 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 what should be the approach to the reasoning questions? Should they kind of depend on rote learning, or should they kind of uh, understand it pretty well? Rote learning will not help at all. Hmm. They must understand the question. Hmm. Whenever the reasoning question is there, they have hmm. to read the question twice hmm. and find out that what hmm. exactly has been asked. Hmm. And especially like that, if we say that why terrace farming is done, hmm. so yes. terrace farming is done basically for reducing the water speed or the velocity of the water. Absolutely, so that is. Actually, the key point that the velocity of water, hmm. reducing the velocity, like that, you have to understand that which is a, what are the things actually they are asking. Hmm. The reason you must, if you ask yourself why, then hmm. only the answer will come. Absolutely. So asking why to yourself is very important. Right. Uh, another uh, major uh, dilemma as far as geography is concerned is because you have a choice of answering only three chapter questions out of five. so many students are tempted to leave out two units completely is it advisable to do only 3 out of 5 what would you as a teacher suggest uh, for this year it is three questions that they have to attempt yes. but generally we say the students at least you keep in your high hand uh, four to five questions you must prepare hmm. but if you are doing the if the students are doing for that uh, choice of the chapters hmm. they must be sure that they are doing 100% of the chapter in hmm. that chapter they cannot leave a sentence only yeah so but preferably uh, doing only 3 out of 5 may be kind of taking a risk it would probably be a little advisable to do at least four so that you have a buffer chapter hmm. at yes a little extra you must have hmm. because yes. Uh, doing hundred percent of a chapter is a little bit difficult for them hmm. if the tag questions are there from the yes. GK portion. Of. Yes, yes. It's better to have something like that in hand. Absolutely. Now, uh, what would you advise students should do in the one day gap that they get between the maths and the geography paper? How how exactly should the last minute revision should be done? They should concentrate on math. Hmm. the map should be exact and if they have decided that i'll go for these many chapters mm. better to stick to that one and mm. do the thorough revision of those chapters mm. don't try to start anything new during that period so when you say thorough revision i mean what exactly will constitute thorough revision should they go through the entire textbook or only their notes at that time no never notes okay never notes the thorough from the book the page guide book whatever they are using Hmm. they must be thorough to that one notes will never help them okay no in the sense that there are textbooks and there are textbooks in the sense that there are different textbooks for geography a school may have prescribed a particular textbook 
but some other textbook may have some elements which may be more or less than this textbook which is why is it better to study from a variety of textbook or just the textbook prescribed by the school actually the icc council has no prescribed book so yes. whatever book is available in the market hmm. that is the syllabus yes so it is advisable at at this juncture i don't know how much it is a, uh, possible for them to hold a pencil when the teacher is teaching hmm. so whatever extra the teacher is teaching is better to note down okay and so that all the points can merge in at one place and it will be available to them and you would suggest so that, that yeah and you would advise Points. And you would advise that they look at uh, previous year question papers or some sample papers so that they get an idea about the kind of reasoning questions in particular that will be asked. Yes, yes. So that, that the, uh, solving the previous year's questions is very very important. Okay. At least they will understand the language of the question. That hmm. is also important. You have to understand the question. Hmm. And all the subjects has their own uh, language to answer. Absolutely. Once you are able to understand the question, then only will be able to frame properly. Okay, fine. So read the reading the questions and solving it is very important. Right. Okay. Great. Very useful tips. Uh, I'm sure the students will take note of this and implement this in the examination so that their semester two examination turns out to be much better than what their semester one examination result was. Thank you very much for your time, ma'am. Thank you. All the best to all the students of the ICC board. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.